this little DC DC converter from IC station. They asked me if I'd check it out since I do a lot of solar projects. And this one, I'm going to have to go to the computer screen to read off exactly what it is. It is 25 watts maximum, 3 to 15 volt input power with a half a volt to 30 volt output, DC to DC buck boost converter, and a solar regulator. So that's why they sent it to me. They want to see how it works as solar. I'm going to set up a little setup here for where I think of using solar for as one example. And we'll put it through a few paces and see how it actually works. Okay, when you buy the unit for $6.30 from IC Station, didn't have the wires connected, that's for the test we're going to do here in a few minutes. You just get the bare board, it comes with this little crazy funky sheet. It tells you it's 25 watts, mostly in Chinese or whatever it is. But, as it says, it takes 3 volts to 15 volt input, half a volt to 30 volt output, 25 watts max, and I have no clue what the 28's for. But, on the board itself, Basically, we got an input and output capacitor, uh, two different inductors, probably one for buck, one for boost, I'm not sure. The controller chip, which is so small I can't even read what chip they're using. Um, you have your inputs. Those are labeled. You have in positive and out positive. Negatives are not marked. You have this little jumper right here. This jumper is an enable and disable. If you pull off the jumper and leave the pins, the circuit is disabled. It will not output any power. Put it back on, it will operate. And you have a trim pot here for your output voltage to change it from a half volt to 30 volts. And I'm guessing it's probably about a 10 turn, so you can get really fine adjustment on this one. So let me set up the uh, bench here first and we'll demo what I'm thinking of doing with it. Then we'll go outside and actually try the solar capability. Okay, what I have set up here for the time being, so we can test the circuit first, we have my lab power supply set at 12 volts output power going into the unit. Since we're thinking solar, I'm going to use a 12 volt, 10 watt solar panel when we go outside. So I'm going to simulate it first with the bench top power supply. So you got 12 volts coming in. I have the trim pot set for about 5 volts going out through a connector through the USB charger doctor, this way we can see the output voltage and amperage, and then going into my cell phone. So that's my circuit idea. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. We don't need to keep on seeing this. Let's turn this on. You can see my phone all of a sudden kicked on. So let's zoom in a little bit. You can see we're pulling about 0.6 at 4.96 volts. I can turn it up just a little bit more. Hold on one second here. So if I wait for it to go back to voltage. There you go, 4.96, 512, that's good. You're allowed about 10% variance, so as long as you keep about five and a quarter volts or five, you'll get a good amount of power. See how the amperage kicked up to about 0.68 now at 5.05 .05 volts. My red light's on my phone, so it says it's charging. Now, trying to figure out the efficiency here, I did some quick little math on their envelope. I have the output on the uh, benchtop power supply set at 12.4 volts, and it's currently consuming 0.45 amps, which is five, basically 5.5 five watts. Output power, as we saw, was just over 5 volts at 0.64 amps, equals to an output power of three and a quarter watts. It's roughly about a 60% efficiency, so it's not very efficient at this level. Apparently this circuit, the only time you get up to about 95% efficient is when you're talking about less than a volt difference. So if I had to set for 12 volts input and maybe 11 volts out, I would get about 95% efficient. But using it to charge a cell phone from a 12 volt panel, you're not gonna get the efficiency. Okay, now we're outside with the solar panel. I have the solar panel itself running through to the adapter. And I'm going to have to bring it up really close. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe I can shade it. But I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up. You can barely see it flickering right now. It's actually reading zero amps. And it's going to switch over in a second. And it says 5.20 volts. 5.21. You can barely make it out. 
So it is working for the moment, but let's see what happens once I plug my phone into it. Phone is not okay. The phone actually kicked on that time. And let's see what we're getting here. Kind of hard to tell because the screen is very dim. Let's see what I can get here. Point fifty nine, point fifty seven amps. So it's getting some power through it, but it's being very finicky. Now see, I just covered the solar panel with my hand for a second, and it cannot bring itself back on right now. It's the it collapsed the voltage on the solar cell. So as you can see from trying to do this little setup right here, a 10 watt solar panel, the DC-DC converter, it can barely light this, and if the conditions are right, it will actually charge your phone. But the second you get one little cloud in the sky and shade it, the problem with DC to DC converters is they try to suck as much power as they can regardless until they finally charge up. The reason why it didn't work once I shaded it for a second and brought it back is the solar panel couldn't provide enough amperage because it was being shaded. As soon as it came back, it had full power, but at that point, the voltage on the solar panel had collapsed down to zero volts and the DC converter doesn't know to shut off to let that voltage come back up and then basically PWM the uh, voltage so this way it can get at least some power out of it so the voltage stays collapsed. That's the problem with using a DC to DC converter on directly to a solar panel. The only way to get around that is basically get an MPPT solar charge controller which is a DC to DC converter with some sort of heuristics that allow it to find that sweet spot and keep the panel voltage from collapsing. You usually only find this on bigger solar installations. Is this a good DC to DC converter? I think it's not bad, especially for the price. It works good, say if you had a 12 volt lead acid battery and you wanted to convert it down to five volts or three volts or actually jump it up and take 12 volts from a car battery and jump it up to 18 volts to charge a portable drill or something like that. This actually works really good for that, but it needs a constant amount of power. It's also marketed as solar. It doesn't work. It doesn't have the right topology to work in solar. But having uh, a benchtop power supply that's fixed, take an old laptop power supply that puts out 15 volts or less and use that as an input, it would work perfectly fine. But for a solar application, no. So if you have any questions and comments, Go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to get back to you.